The author calling a dam an act of violence and responding with terrorism is far too extreme. Sonata is the newest series from Image Comics. I'm a huge fan of science fiction and fantasy genre, so a science fantasy comic is right in my wheelhouse. David Hine is a lead writer, and artist Brian Haberlein receives a writing credit as well. It's an interesting book with highs and lows to discuss. Before I get started, I want to apologize for the lack of content. I mentioned during my event Leviathan review, I was feeling under the weather. My symptoms became worse and I was diagnosed with dengue fever. I was in the hospital for a couple days. The doctor says I'm doing well now and I was released 24 hours earlier than expected. Without new content, the channel lost some momentum, but we did get one new subscriber. Fred Cole, thank you very much for subscribing to Thinking Critical YouTube. All the success we're experiencing is made possible by the wonderful channel viewers and subscribers. Now back to business. The opening page explains, every five cycles the planet Rand comes close enough to Perdita to travel there by ship. The people of Rand colonize Perdita looking for resources as their own run dry. It's also a one-way trip, so there's no going back. The art from Brian Haberlein is interesting to say the least. His digital style is photorealistic with heavy steampunk influence. There are some very impressive creature designs, but many other features are less inspired. This parachute and satellite entering Perdita's atmosphere looks terrific, but doesn't feel alien in the slightest. Readers are introduced to Sonata, daughter of Rand leader Brayman. She's very plucky. After the loss of her mother, her father keeps a watchful eye on her and looks to keep her safe. She's a highly competent teen Themisor rider looking for adventure. Haberlein's designs fall short with the Rand and their tie-in rivals. They look 100% human. His designs look like concept art for a Hollywood film rather than a science fantasy comic. The characters look straight out of a Mad Max set rather than alien cultures. The best thing about comic books is creators are only limited by their own imaginations. Why create aliens? That are so familiar. It's a huge waste unless we later learn the Ran and Titans all originated from Earth and we're in an endless cycle of killing planets. Which would be even lamer, to be honest. New Salamar is the first Ran settlement on Perdita. It's taken seven years to build it up to this point. It's fun to look at, but it raises some inconsistencies with the setting. If the Ran have technology to colonize other planets, why are they relying on blimps? Shouldn't they have superior knowledge of aviation and booster machinery? Either way, it looks neat and Haberlein seems much more interested in the alien architecture than the aliens themselves. The art in Sonata No. 1 is technically really good, but lacks imagination in some areas for an alien science fantasy comic. I rate it 3 out of 5. The story from David Hine and Brian Haberlein is far more formulaic. I describe this as Fern Gully fanfic with a feminist edge to it. If you're familiar with stories about man abusing natural resources, you already know Sonata No. 1 by heart. Although the backstory doesn't make much sense, the Rand people respect nature and do everything they can to preserve it. They come from the planet Rand, so I must assume this is something almost every inhabitant there believes in. If the Rand are conservationists by nature, how did they run out of resources on their original planet to begin with? Is the message of the story no matter how hard we try, humans are so evil we destroy our planets no matter what? The newest Rand arrivals land off course and are soon introduced to some local wildlife. Sonata flies low and hard to scare off the Grim Cats. A sleeping giant also arrives. This is probably the coolest design in the entire story and I would really like to know more about the giants. Unfortunately, the rest of the story isn't engaging enough for me to stick on the series past issue 1. Sonata also backflips off her thermosaur mid-flight. She's probably a bit too competent for a teenager, if I'm being honest. Overall, her character is fine, but a bit too generic in personality and motivations. When she returns to New Salomar, an indigenous tribesman is awaiting her. Treen is a member of the Lumani and speaks a rather odd dialect of English in comparison to his assumed teachers. You wouldn't expect sentence composition to change like this unless Lumani spoke English before the Ran arrived. Highly unlikely. We then learn Matari is the matriarch of the civilization. Everyone has a vote in the settlement. 
but it's all rather moot because she is the ultimate authority. This makes no sense, and it's actually pretty stupid. But the good news is we won't have to hear Sonata bitch about oppression based on her gender. The ultimate authority in the entire culture is Whammon. Lumani and Rand's water is running dry due to interference from their tie-in neighbors. Another set of alien colonizers that just so happened to land seemingly a couple miles away on the enormous uninhabited planet. What a coincidence! Matari sends the men and Lumani to discuss terms with the Titans and get their water back. On a side note, this planet is heavily covered in vegetation. I find it impossible to believe there is only one source of fresh water in the area. I also find it impossible that in seven years they never explored to find a backup source. There is no way off the planet. Everything would be scouted and backups to the backups would be in place by now. Moving on. Sonata is beside herself to learn the Titans built an environmentally friendly power supply. The fact that the Rand haven't already done this is an indictment on their terrible leadership and survival skills. If Sonata is half as smart as advertised, she would defect at this very moment. The Titans have much better logistics and infrastructure in place for future generations. As they approach the Titan settlement, they're also burning fossil fuels and their buildings are made of metal. The bastards are trying to kill the entire planet. I kind of wish the Titans all wore mining helmets or were armed with enormous harpoon cannons for their next sea expedition. They all have evil faces except the leader's son, who I'm certain will fall for Sonata after they accidentally run into each other later on in the series. The Titans are rightfully distrustful of their Rand neighbors, as you'll soon see. Brayman pleads for the water to be restored for the Rand and the Lumani, who have been there for untold generations. The Titan are evil, so the leader insults the Lumani as primitive and asks how they can stand their stink. If only he had a mustache to twirl. He tells them to all get packing and move somewhere else with a different water supply. Technically he's right. Nobody owns exclusive territory over the waters. Building the dam wasn't nice, but certainly not unethical behavior for any people looking to survive the new terrain. Logistics and infrastructure are reasonable expectations from any settlement. They return to New Salomar and convene the High Council. Pay attention to where the Lumani are seated, or not seated. Despite being the original inhabitants, the Rand don't grant them a seat at the table. The head position is designated for their matriarch. Despite what the author tells the reader about the Rand culture, they also see the Lumani as lesser than them and subservient to their own matriarchal system. My favorite part is this bottom panel. Does this logic sound familiar? That dam represents an act of violence just by existing. Then the real mental gymnastics. It is only an object. Doesn't jive with what he just said. Destroying it is not truly an act of violence if we avoid the taking of life. Destroying another settlement's possession is technically an act of war, but that doesn't fit the narrative, I guess. Let's see what the creators think is a reasonable response to this. That's right, they're going to blow a hole in it with a bomb. But it's not going to be a big hole so the Lumani won't suspect a thing. The Rand are responding to an ethical infrastructure and logistics project with terrorism. That escalated fast. The idiots don't know what they're doing and blow the whole dam to hell, leading to an interesting discovery that's far too little, too late to save the issue or the series in my opinion. The characterization is all over the place. The story in Sonata No. 1 is so derivative it's basically paint by numbers. I rate the writing 1.5 out of 5. I love science fiction and fantasy. Unfortunately, I hate the story and most of the characterization in Sonata No. 1. The author calling a dam an act of violence and responding with terrorism is far too extreme. Despite some impressive art and creature designs, I'd rate Sonata No. 1 2 out of 5. Antifa supporters or environmental extremists will be okay with these actions. Most normal people with upstanding morals won't connect with this at all. I'll be avoiding anything from either David Hine or Brian Haberline for the foreseeable future. This is a boring book capped off with a disgusting act of terror from the quote-unquote good guys. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.